Welcome back. Now, the Home Secretary, Theresa May, looks to be storming ahead in the race to become the next leader of the Conservative Party and Prime Minister, or at least if the polls are to be believed. But two of her rivals, Michael Gove and Andrea Leadsom, have warned the country's next leader should be a Brexiteer. Well, I'm joined now by another of the five candidates, Liam Fox, the former Defence Secretary, who, of course, also backed the Leave camp. And uh, very good morning to you, morning. Dr Fox. And, 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 you know, you're not seen, I mean, you must see the polling yourself, you're not seen uh, with the best will in the world likely to, to win this race. So are you in it just to inject some serious policy thinking? Well, we're not electing a leader of the opposition who's got four years or five years to play themselves into a role where we're talking of someone who in ten weeks' time will be the Prime Minister, and the next day we'll be getting a call from Mr Putin. We'll be asked to make judgments on international security, who will have to set the nuclear instructions for our deterrent. So we need to have some serious understanding that this is, cannot be a rerun of the European referendum. It cannot simply be a personality contest. This is not a game. This is about who will be the head of government uh, at a very difficult international time. But does it have time. to be one of you three, you on the Brexit side? Well, I think when it comes to negotiating, you have to think about this. It's not just whether we're keeping faith with the British people, which of course we must. The question is how much credibility would you have from the other side? So you've got 27 other governments negotiating with us. Will they think that somebody who voted to remain is actually committed to the position that the British public brought forward in the referendum so, verdict. So if you were elected, you would, for instance, therefore, to show that seriousness and the commitment to the side, you would trigger Article 50 as soon as possible. This is the process by which the, the UK announces it's leaving. As soon as we got the ground rules established, I think we have to understand that there's now a clear difference between the European Commission and the faceless bureaucrats of Brussels who have this ideological approach to everything and the elected governments the German government, the French government in particular, who have elections next year, who will want to come to practical solutions. And the, the intervention by the Trade Commissioner this week was, was just beyond bizarre. And she was asked that... Uh, well, if, no negotiations until you leave. And the, the next question she was asked was, but wouldn't that be detrimental to every single European economy? And she said, yes. Now, who on earth would operate a stupid rule like that? So we need some common sense uh, so that the, the French government and the German governments are able to make sure they can continue to trade with the UK, export to the UK and maintain their own jobs Just to be explicit, and Dr Fox, on the issue of Article 50, first day in Downing Street, you, you would trigger that? You no, no. Say. I said as soon as we've got the ground rules established, I think we'd want to get new government in place. Uh, we want to get to see the views of our partners, what our room for manoeuvre is, and as soon as we can. But my aim would be that Britain would be leaving the European Union on the 1st of January 2019. And I think we actually have to aim for a date. So, so by, uh, by Christmas time, really. So uh, who uh, are you going to back? Uh, who will you back if you, if you um, fall out? Well, I have no hurdles. intentions of, um, of, of thinking about anything anything other than, than going forward and I think that we have to set out some ideas that we will put immediately into operation. I think we've gone through a period of drift. I think we've kicked so many things into the long grass, the long grass is full. I think we have to start making some decisions. We've got to give the go ahead uh, for the, the upgrade of our nuclear deterrent. We've got to go ahead with a new runway at Heathrow. We've got to go ahead um, with, uh, with Hinkley but have to question whether that is the, the right model and very quickly but make a decision. But given the urgency you describe, I mean, there is some discussion within your party, isn't there, saying, well, look, Theresa May's miles in the lead. Why don't all the rest of you, for the good of the country, just give her a coronation. We need a new Prime Minister. We also need to have debate about these very big issues. That's what I want to inject into this contest. I want to talk about why we have an obsession with uh, meddling in the structures of the health service rather than concentrating on the medicine to get us better patient outcomes. Um, I want to make sure that the process of government is much more streamlined so that we can get uh, better results for the money that we put in. And I think that we need to start to ask big questions about how we go forward and ask them very quickly. Do you have any views on uh, you know, those campaigning on the Brexit side as well? Michael Gove and his conduct in terms of, some say, uh, you know, doing in the Prime Minister or being part of that and also uh, how he dealt with his relations with, with Boris Johnson? Well, all through the referendum campaign, I said, let's stick to the issues. Let's not impugn the character or the nature, uh, honesty or integrity of our colleagues. Uh, and that's how I intend to yeah, approach this. I mean, this. there are plenty, plenty of others in the party saying all kinds of things, which I won't repeat here. Some of them pretty strong about his conduct. Uh, Cuckoo in the Nest was one of the milder ones. Well, I've heard them, and it's up to my colleagues to make their own judgment. Uh, my role in this is going to be to keep us on 
the very big issues that the new Prime Minister will have to deal with. And uh, as I said, the, the day after they come to be Prime Minister, they've got to take that call from President Putin, uh, asking what Britain's policy is going to be. We need to have uh, people there who have experience of those right. big security and big foreign policy issues. Well, that'd be Theresa May then, if it's not you. Well, as I said, it's up to my colleagues to make their own case, but I think that we have to recognise this is not a parlour game we're playing. This is about the future security and well-being of the British people. Liam Fox, thank you very much indeed.